Hi, in this video, we'll be building an anomaly detector using autoencoders. I'll be taking you through step-by-step -step process of building an autoencoder uh, using TensorFlow. Now, if you want to watch a detailed video on what is autoencoder, you can click the link on the top. But for this video, that is not mandatory. I'll be covering the key aspects of autoencoder in this video itself. But if you want to know more than what I cover in this video, you can use the link on the top or link in the video description to watch uh, details of autoencoder. Now, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm importing the typical packages, pandas for reading the data set, matplotlib for visualizing the data set, TensorFlow for building the model. I am using the Keras API to build the model. Uh, NumPy is just like playing around with the uh, output of the model. And then uh, basically the scikit-learn functions for model selection and for scaling the data. So that's what I am uh, importing over here. And then I'm going to use the ECG 5000 data set. The data set is available in this particular uh, website, timeseriesclassification.com. You can find a lot of time series data set over there. I'm downloading the ECG 5000 data set. Now, we all know ECG stands for electrocardiogram. Now, what this data set is basically now, first electrocardiogram, what it is, is basically, it checks how your heart is functioning by measuring electrical activity of the heart. Now, what happened in each heartbeat, right? An electrical impulse travels through the heart that creates muscles to squeeze and pump a blood to the heart, right? That's what it does. That's what typically our body functions. Now, this electrocardiogram, that cap it captures that electrical impulse and that can help doctors determine if the, uh, if the heart function is normal or irregular. So that's what like basically an ECG does. And this data set contains information of both a normal activity of the heart and irregular activity of the heart. And what we are going to do is we are going to take this data set and we are going to build an anomaly detector. Right. I already downloaded the data set. It might take some time. So that's why I already downloaded it. Now, if you see the output of this particular download, there are multiple files over here. So there is like an ARFF file or that's a TXT file and that's a .txt. These are different format of the same file. I'm going to use the .txt file. There is a train and test. The train and test combined together makes around 5,000 observations. So there are 5,000 observations containing both normal activity of the heart and irregular activity of the heart right that's the ecg data set so what i'm doing is i'm concatenating both the train and test data set into a single data set so i'm using an unix function over here cat so cat will just like take this two data set uh, it will display it but what i'm doing is while it's displaying i'm sending the output to another file so that it looks like more a concatenated single file right so i'm running this cat and then if, if i'm printing the top few records uh, of the file so you can see this is how it looks like there are around like 140 observations and this first variable is the target variable it says whether the activity is normal or irregular right so let me first get it to the pandas data frame uh, so what i'm doing is i'm taking this particular ecg final dot text i am doing a read csv the separator is now a, a set of con consecutive spaces so i'm giving that as a separator and then i'm giving header the header is not there so header is none if i don't give it it will take the first line as header so i'm taking that so this is how my output looks like now you can see like basically I have around 5000 rows and 141 columns. 140 columns are used to measure the art activity and one column is the target column that is the first one. Right. So now the, the class number one is the normal activity. The class number two, three, four and five are the uh, irregular activity of the heart. Right. So that's how the output is. Now the column name, if you see on the top, starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, the, that is the default column name that pandas uh, give if you are not feeding any schema to it or if you are telling not to infer the header, right? Now, this with this column name, we cannot do any processing because the numeric in the column name, uh, only numeric in the column name, pandas does not allow to slice and dice, right? So for that, what I'm doing is I'm just printing the column names. It starts from 0 to 141. 
now and it says in data type i'm going to add a prefix to the column so that i can do some column processing and for that pandas has a function called add prefix it can be add prefix or add suffix so i'm going to add prefix so what will happen when i do this the column name becomes c0 c1 c2 c3 4 so that i can uh, slice and dice the column now if you see the column name the column name will be like c0 c1 c2 c3 4 right so now i can use this column name and then do a slice and dicing now next what i'm going to do is i'm i'm currently focusing on the data preparation activity right so once we have the data preparation activity we'll go to the modeling activity so now what i'm doing is i'm c0 is my target value i told you this is the first column with else whether it's a normal or abnormal art activity so i'm just doing a value counts which will give me the number of records in each category so if you see the data is between one to five and uh, one has the most observation that is 2919 uh, the second to fifth are the abnormal activity first is the normal activity and this is how the abnormal activity looks like 2345 what i'm going to do is i'm going to combine 2345 into anomaly and one into normal right that's what i'm going to do so this is how the target distribution looks like right let me quickly do an uh, describe of the data set uh, basically, uh, if you see like this is how the data set looks like, this is how your uh, distribution of data looks like of each column mean standard deviation. Uh, if you see from the target column, the minimum value is 1 and the maximum value is 5. Right. So this is how the data set looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this data and I'm going to split the data set first. And for splitting the data set, I'm using the train test split of uh, scikit-learn. I am passing basically all the values as my training uh, from 0 to 141 and I am taking only the first column as my target, right? Basically, I need to pass X and Y value. My X value is the feature columns. I am passing all the data. My Y value is only the first column. Uh, the C0, which contains the actual, um, which contains the actual label of the column, right? And I'm telling a 80-20 split over here. So once I run this, it will give me a train data and test data and train labels and test label, right? So this is what it's given. Basically for training, we don't need the first column because the first column is the label on the top. But the reason I kept it is so that I can split based on the columns uh, C0 uh, to normal and abnormal data set. That's why I kept it. But I will remove it during the training process, right? Let's now go next. What I'm doing is I am basically uh, initializing a scalar object now because i'm going to build a neural network model neural network model works better on a scale data right it will train faster and it will converge faster so i am doing a scaling i am using a min max scalar here but you can also try with standard scalar uh, uh, in this case uh, so i'm using a min max scalar and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the train data alone and scale the data, right? I'm going to basically uh, fit the data set on the train data. So my my scalar function will learn the parameters using the train data. And I'm going to use the learned parameter to transform the test data set. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm having a min-max scalar object initialized. I am calling scalar.fit on train data. And then I have the data scaled, which is the learned parameters. Now what I'm doing is I am going to scale my training data and both test data. So I'm calling the transform function of uh, transform function with the train data and test data. So I will have the scaled version of the train and test data set. Right. So now if I uh, run the output train data set scale, uh, basically it will have a complete array of 141 values. Um, this is how it uh, basically looks like. Even the input value is scaled, but that's fine. We are going to ignore the input value, right? So now I have the train data scale, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this particular training data into a normal data and anomaly data. And how do I know which is normal data and which is our, uh, abnormal data is basically uh, based on the value train data scale. Right, that's what it's going to be. I'm basically going to use. So what I'm doing in this case is basically I am taking the train underscore data scale, right? And then I am uh, basically like um, adding prefix to the column because the column name, when I convert to Panda, it will be again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm telling wherever the C0 equal to 0 over here, right? I am uh, basically telling in this case, it's, it's a normal data. 
right? And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the anomaly data and I'm taking again taking the train data scale and I'm querying based on the column greater than zero. Those are basically anomaly data for me. So I'm just uh, taking that and I'm taking all the columns that is after the first column because first column is the label column and taking all the data after the first column in this case so it will give me a normal train data and anomaly train data that's what it's going to do so let me uh, run this one and now i have a normal anomaly data and train data i'm going to do the same thing for test data as well i am going to split into normal test data and anomaly test data right so let me uh, run this part so i will have like normal uh, test data and anomaly test data in this case right and here i am using the test data scaled over here which i am using over here right so now i have a uh, test data frame and a train data frame. Now the train data frame has its own anomaly and normal data set. The test data frame has its own normal and anomaly data set, right? Let me quickly print the shape of it. And this is how it looks like. It's a 80-20 split. You have two, uh, two, three, five, six records for normal train data and uh, for uh, normal test data, you have five, 563 records. And similarly for anomaly, you have 1644 four and 437. It's not like very highly imbalanced that we need to do anything. But anyway, like for auto encoder, we are going to train only with normal data set. We are not going to use anomaly. Anomaly is going to use only doing the validation and inference, right? Uh, and that I have covered in my previous video, but I will talk about that more. Now, what I can do is I'm going to take some sample data, normal data and plot it. I'm going to take some of the anomaly data and plot it. I'm going to create plot so that we can see how the data differs, right? Now for auto encoder or for any anomaly detection, the data distribution has to be separate than your normal pattern, right? And that's what we are going to do. And we all know like auto encoder is an unsupervised learning technique. So we are not going to feed label to as target to for the model to learn. It's going to learn based on the pattern. Right now, if you see, this is the normal data pattern. I have the first three records plotted. And if you see basically the activity, uh, typically the, this is like zero to 140 observations. The activity is to get basically there's up and down and this is how the normal pattern looks like. Initially, there's a drop because that is the start of the ECG measurement, right? Otherwise, it's pretty much uh, towards the uh, normal cyclic circle, right? Now, if you take anomaly data in contrary, uh, if you see basically now the anomaly data it starts off to be normal but sudden there's a sudden drop towards the last observation and you can really see like that is a separation between the normal and anomaly in this case right so the what we are going to do in our model is basically take all the normal data observation we will train a model that learns the normal data right and then we are going to use the anomaly during the inference process to see like how anomaly behaves. And if you remember that is the term I said called reconstruction error, right? That's what we are going to use to determine whether it's anomaly data or a normal data. I will talk about it again. So the reconstruction error I had talked in my previous video and that is the, that is the basis for your anomaly detection, right? So now to create a model, a auto encoder, you have two ways to create it. One is you can just use the typical, uh, the sequential model uh, parameter that we have and you can add layers. In the layer, you are adding two layer. If you see, this is the encoder layer and this is the decoder layer. So auto encoder consists of basically an uh, encoding part and a decoding part. The encoding part, if you see, does a down sampling. It first has 64 uh, units, 32 units, 60 to 16 units, and it finally has an eight units uh, intermediate layer. This intermediate layer is also called an bottleneck layer. So what it does is it takes a data in a higher dimension and converts the data into a lower dimension, similar to a data compression what typically what a data compression does so it has it learns the embedding of the data into an uh, eight unit vector right in this case and then to reconstruct back the data it again uses an up sampler which is nothing but the inverse of the down sampler so it takes 16 32 64 and finally the input for us is 140 units the output also will be 140 units now, in the process of taking this data, downsampling it and upsampling it, there is some reconstruction error. It's a lossy compression. So the data output will not be perfect. Right? Now, when we take a normal data and train this particular network, 
what is going to happen is it's going to kind of try to reconstruct the normal data because that is our objective to learn the normal data in a proper way. But when an irregular data, that is the anomaly data comes in, it will not be able to reconstruct at all. It will be completely the reconstruction error. The difference between the input and the output is called reconstruction error. The reconstruction error for the anomaly data will be very high compared to the normal data. And that's, that's the thing we are going to use to determine whether the output is anomaly or normal. Right now, when we see the graphs and everything, we will get a better idea how it looks like, even though it looks more theoretical now. Where once we go into the graph, you will be able to visualize it better. Now, there are two ways you this one way of creating a model, the other way, uh, which we are going to use is, is subclassing, right? The model subclassing uh, parameter that is part of TensorFlow 2.0. And why we use it is it helps us to use the encoder and decoder separately easily. And in the top also I can use it. I can go to the layers and use it, but this, this gives me a better way of using the encoder and decoder. Suppose I want to use this model only for compressing the data or for compressing the visualization or take the output compression and run it with this XGBoost or random forest model. I can only use the encoder. I don't need the decoder at all. So this allows me to use the model in multiple different ways. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm creating a class auto encoder right i'm creating an uh, init function this is the kind of a constructor that is getting called and then what i'm going to do is i am i'm creating an encoder the same thing in the sequential object that we created 64 32 16 units and 8 units is the bottleneck layer and then i am having an decoder function that does an upsampling of whatever the downsampling has been done by the encoder and finally the output is 140 units in this case 140 is the output uh, depending on your problem you may want to change it the final activation layer is sigmoid and remaining all are uh, relu function right if you don't give if you use an linear activation function then your model is not going to learn the non linearity basically you don't need this multiple layers at all so i have non linear activation typically a sigmoid i have for the final output layer right now the call method what i am doing is i am basically calling the encoder passing the uh, input data and then basically i'm passing the encoder to the decoder and getting the output decoded value so this is how my model looks like and let me run this now this auto encoder is the class once i call this class it will return me a final mo model object it will return me the decoded final uh, model object which contains an encoder bottleneck layer and the decoder that's what it's going to return so i'm getting the model object by auto encoder i am setting an early stopping function uh, I want to stop my model in case the validation loss does not improve uh, for more than uh, two, ep two, uh, two runs, right? Uh, two epochs. So that's why I'm setting the patient to two, patients to two. And then uh, a mode is not required. Validation loss, we always check the minimum. Uh, if it's accuracy, we always check the maximum. Uh, basically, if you don't set it, it will be auto. Based on the objective that we are setting, the model will be able to understand. And then I'm compiling this model with an Adam optimization, uh, hand and loss as a mean absolute error. That's the loss function I'm going to use. So my model is defined. Now I'm going to uh, fit the model with the data, right? Now I have a normal data as my input and because it takes both s and y x and y values and in this case like uh, we see unsupervised learning i'm just uh, passing some dummy y values that is again i'm passing the train data but um, because that's a mandatory field otherwise uh, you can just uh, ignore this part it's not going to get used now if you see over here what i'm doing is i am passing the normal data as input. So my model is going to learn the normal data, how the normal data looks like. It's going to kind of fit to the normal data, right? And I'm telling my epochs as 50, but I have early stopping, so it will not run for 50 epochs. I am giving my batch size. And for validation, what I'm doing is, I am passing my entire data set, both. I'm not using the split data set normally and anomaly. I'm passing my actual train data that can contain, that contains both the normal as well as the anomaly data. And why am I doing this? Because when it's going to validate it, it's going to basically go and uh, do a an, uh, comparison between the normal data and target data. And wherever the normal data set is there, it's going to have a low, low mean absolute error. But for anomaly data, it's trying to kind of fit to it, but it will not find a low mean absolute error. So it will try to separate the classes as well. 
right that's the reason i am passing both the data set and telling like uh, shuffle equal to true but if you are pass if you are see in the in the case of time series data the order is important so you make shuffle equal to false and i'm giving my uh, callbacks early stopping right this this even though the ecg is a time series function right over the time our art rate is but i'm not considering this as a time series function if you are using an lstm model instead of a normal model and want to consider as time series you may go for shuffle equal to false right but in this case i am just using a simple feed forward neural network all right so i have the early early stopping callback now let me try to fit the model okay so this will be very fast uh, the anometer man so it's trying to run everything and you one thing you may notice is the the validation loss and basically you are uh, you are basically uh, the normal loss right the training loss there will be huge difference so it's not that the model is underfitting in this case the reason if you remember in the validation function i am giving both the normal data and the abnormal data against my training data as only normal data so you will see this kind of behavior in auto encoder that is completely fine and that's why i am having a early stopping so that i can just validate the validation loss right so it's not that the model has underfit because my validation loss is way higher than my uh, training loss this is a normal behavior in auto encoder okay now what i'm doing my model is trained i have a model so now what i can do is i can get my encoder and decoder output separately and see like uh, what it looks like basically my encoder is nothing but a eight unit uh, eight unit representation of the data so i am passing my input which is 140 units and my uh, encoder layer is a bot as a bottleneck layer which is eight units so let me run this and my decoder is constructing it back to 1 140 units so if you see the output over here my encoder output is basically like an 8 unit uh, vector and i am passing only the test data here not the um, train data that was used during the training process and my decoder output will be like uh, an 140 representation of the data right so this is how it looks like so we can also quickly what we can do is we can plot the normal data and the decoder output the normal data is the actual data that we are fast passing and the decoder data is the reconstructed data now what i said the data will be similar right but it will not be exactly same that may be some error if you see this is how it looks like i have my uh, normal data that is the blue color and i have my uh, decoder data that is the reconstructed data in red color and if you see there are some issues here 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 the, this is called the reconstruction error the difference between your top peak and the red uh, one the blue and the red one is called the reconstruction error and this is for normal data if you see the normal data it's it is fitting very well because our model was trained on normal data but let's see what happens if we pass an anomaly data so what i am doing is i am basically in the in case of the normal test data i passed on the top i am passing my anomaly test data right so now let me uh, run this and let me plot how my anomaly test data looks like and the decoder output now if you see over here the top one is my anomaly test data and the red one is my decoder output if you see basically here the error is pretty high the reconstruction error in this case is pretty high and now basically we have got a pretty good model in case if we pass an uh, anomaly data we are going to get i reconstruction error because it's not able to reconstruct the input over here but if we pass pass a normal data it will it knows about the normal data so the reconstruction error is very less and this is what we are going to use in our case to basically see whether data is anomaly or and data is uh, basically a normal behavior right so now what we will do is we will define our uh, loss like loss threshold for our model so what i am doing is i am taking the normal test data i am taking my model and calling the model dot predict so the it will it will give me an output uh, error between the input and output right now what i am doing is i am taking my uh, basically keras loss function on uh, mean absolute error i am passing the reconstruction over here and the normal test data right and i will get a loss between the normal data and your reconstructed data and i am just going to plot it how it looks like right so let me run this uh, i'm i'm just plotting the error component okay here so my i have my normal data i have my reconstructed data i am checking the error between the two normal data and reconstructed data and this is how my error looks like if you see the x axis over here most of my value lies between somewhere like 0.05 
there are few anomalies, right? Uh, that's fine because you cannot have a hundred percent perfect model. Uh, but I will I will kind of tell you like how it looks for anomaly as well. So this is how my error looks like between my normal data and my reconstructed data. So typically it's around point not five. Most of my observations are covered, right? Now let me take mean of this train loss. So I need to set a threshold by, from which I can tell any value above this is an anomaly or any value below this is a normal data, right? So what I'm doing now, I'm going to take a mean of my particular uh, training loss that I created for the normal data, right? I am also taking the standard deviation over here. So for in this case of the graph, 0.026 because most of the observation are in this range, 0.026 somewhere here is going to be my mean and my standard deviation is 0.01. Now to set a threshold, what I can do is based on the business scenario, the business context that you are dealing with, you can have one standard deviation, two standard deviation or three standard deviation or four or five standard deviation as your threshold, right? So I'm taking my threshold. I'm telling my take my mean value that is 0 0.026 and two standard deviation in this case as my uh, as my total threshold, right? So I'm taking the mean. I am having two standard deviation of that mean value of my standard deviation uh, value and then I'm setting that as threshold. So once I run this, my threshold will be nothing but 0.026 plus 0.001 plus 0.001, right? So around 0.048 is my threshold. So my threshold above is somewhere here, 0.048 will be somewhere here. So this, so anything less than this threshold because it's a normal data, the data is going to be normal. Anything higher than the data, the normal is going to be abnormal or irregular uh, pattern, right, for us. Now, let me also do the same thing for the anomaly data, right? What I'm doing is I'm doing my model.predict over here. I'm telling like basically uh, I'm predicting the anomaly data and then I am uh, doing the mean absolute error between the reconstruction A. This is the reconstruction anomaly uh, with the anomaly test data and plotting the data. Right. If you saw on the top, most of our observations are within 0.05. But if you see over here, most of the of our observation are hapo 0.045 or not 0.05 in this case. So you can see the separation. If you see the x-axis on the top, most of my data are within 0.05 range. Right. But here, most of my data are above 0.05 range. So this says this shows my normal data and anomaly data error is completely separated. So I have a pretty good model, but let's plot both together so that we get a better idea how it looks like. So what I'm doing is I'm passing my training loss, which is the normal training loss. This is a training loss, which is my abnormal training loss, which is anomaly. And then I'm also plotting the threshold, which I have set over here, which is nothing but this two standard deviation. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a vertical, a vertical line. Uh, this a, AX V line is a vertical line on the graph and I'm just plotting the legend. So this is how my output look like. Like if you see on the left, the blue value over here is a normal data and the orange value is anomaly data and this is the threshold. If you see over here, I have few anomaly data in the blue region. So these are all going to be my false positives, right? Uh, basically, I thought it's an anomaly, but it has detected it's a normal behavior. But you can move the threshold as per your business criteria. If you want to move one standard deviation, it will be able to detect more anomalies. But your purpose is to detect more normal behavior. Then you can even make it three standard deviation or four standard deviation. It is all on your business scenario, right? My threshold is 0 0.048. Right now, in this case, if you see my uh, mean loss, loss function for your anomaly data, you can see my mean earlier the mean was 0 0.026, but it's 0 0.86 way far apart. So, so the mean is around here 0 0.86, and the standard deviation is basically going to be uh, close to the similar, right? Because from the mean, you are going to take the standard deviation, right? So, this is how it looks like. So, we are able to build a anomaly detector using auto encoder which is able to very well sep separate your normal class and anomaly class right and that's what the auto encoder does now let's see like how well our model has performed like what is the false positives and what is the false negative so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to find uh, how well it predicted normal class right so for that i'm using like tensorflow math function less i'm checking 
how many values in the training loss that we created for the normal data is less than the threshold, right? So this will give me how many values are less than this just I'm printing. It's going to wherever it's going to be, it's less is going to tell true. Wherever it is more, it's going to tell false. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm just passing that to an uh, predicted object, which will have nothing but this array of true and false. And then I'm counting non-zero. So what non-zero will tell, wherever it is true, it is non-zero. By default, like Boolean true is one and Boolean false is zero. So I'm doing a math uh, count zero and predicted. It's going to tell how many it predicted correctly because I'm checking what are less than the threshold, right? If 540 are predicted correctly and what is the actual shape of the predicted? It's around like a 563, right? So our model is almost, if you see like 563 is the total value. 540 is predicted right at around 23 is predicted long. So in this case, if you really see our model is around like 95 to 96% accurate for the normal classes, right? Now let's go and check for the anomaly classes. Now for anomaly, we need to find what is greater than the threshold, right? For your normal class, we found what is less than the threshold. In this case, I'm using the greater function and I'm giving the anomaly uh, class and the threshold. Right, and it will give me the output predicted value. And I'm counting the non zero again of the predicted value. In this case, if you see, it will tell us like uh, 443 is predicted correctly. Right, and what is the total, what is the actual shape of the predicted A? It is around 437. So basically, only four values were predicted longly. Right, and that's what you're seeing over here on the top. Uh, basically, these are all the four values that are in uh, orange color that is below the threshold, right? And that gives us a model which is able to uh, predict like anomaly class almost more than 99%, uh, right? If you do a simple math, it's going to be more than 99%. So our model is able to predict anomalies more than 99% of the time, whereas the normal 95% of the time. Now, according to your business objective, you can move the threshold so that the normal classes are predicted better than the anomaly classes, right? Wherever you move the threshold, the one class is going to benefit and the other class is going to impact it. So this is how you build an anomaly detector using auto encoder. Now you can use LSTM, you can use convolution 1D, you can use a lot of different architecture. So the architecture that you saw on the top over here, this can be any architecture. It can be an LSTM architecture, it can be your uh, convolution 1D architecture, uh, but this is the base for everything, right? This is how you build an anomaly data. You take a normal data, you train the model. The model will work better on the normal data, but when you are giving a data which is not in the same pattern as your normal data, it's going to kind of detect that the reconstruction error is going to be higher and that is going to be termed as anomaly. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much.